Haloperidol or Haldol. That's what people are going to call it is just Haldol. This is a medication you're going to give often depending on where you work. If you work in like psychiatric or you work uh, ED or ICU, even med surgery, you're going you're to see this medication often. Let's talk about what it's given for. It's given for schizophrenia, mania, aggressive and agitated patients. So if a patient becomes very agitated, very aggressive, we can give Haldol 5 milligrams, 10 milligrams, whatever, to try to bring the patient down. What it does is it alters the effect of dopamine. Its therapeutic class is antipsychotic. Its pharmacologic class is butyrophenone. There are several things to keep in mind with this medication. First of all, it can cause extrapyramidal symptoms. Okay, so we can see like the continuous muscle spasms or muscle contractions, the restlessness, the jerky movements, the tremors. These are the types of things we'd see as extrapyramidal symptoms. We also would want to use a lot of caution with QT prolongation. So if the patient already has a widened QT, we would want to use a lot of caution with this because this can further elongate that and lead to ventricular arrhythmias. It can also cause seizures, constipation, dry mouth, agranulocytosis. We'd want to assess for hallucinations in these patients. We want to monitor hemodynamics. If we're going to be depressing and affecting these neurotransmitters, we really want to assess blood pressure, heart rate, and see what's really going on with our patient. We'd want to watch out for neuroleptic malignant syndrome or NMS. This is a really rare, but it's a life-threatening side effect or condition that can cause from some of the, that can come from some of these uh, medications. It's characterized by fever, muscle rigidity, altered mental status, and autonomic dysfunction. So we'd really want to watch our patient and see if if they're going into this neuroleptic malignant syndrome. Now, this is a medication that that is given often for patients that become very aggressive. So I remember I had one uh, nurse who was taking care of a patient who had rhabdomyolysis. Rhabdomyolysis is where it can be due to drug overdose, it can be due to crushing injuries. And what happens is your muscles really start breaking themselves down and your CK levels start to climb and start to elevate a lot. And and, and so your CK levels can get up to 4,000, thousands, and even climb more. And this patient was incredibly aggressive, okay? He uh, could not be kept in bed. We had a, ended up You know, throughout the night, the patient ended up with uh, vest restraint, four point restraints. We were in there with him by his side and he was still ripping out of these restraints. Uh, And so he became incredibly aggressive. And so we started to give him Haldol. Now, the problem that we, you know, discovered later as we were uh, talking with the doctor and we were looking at what's going on with this patient, what's happening, is we started to dive into it a little bit more. And there are cases of where Haldol can actually cause rhabdomyolysis. So this patient's was becoming incredibly aggressive. And unfortunately, Haldol can actually lead to rhabdomyolysis as well. So his rhabdomyolysis was worsening, you know, with the Haldol. We didn't give obscene amounts or anything like that, but the Haldol was not helping the condition that the patient was there for. Okay, so Haldol can help with these aggressive patients. If you have a a patient outburst or a patient attacking a nurse or something like that, and you're not able to calm them down in any other way, Haldol can be used to try to calm these patients and to try to get quick control of the situation, get the patient safe, uh, keep the medical staff safe, keep other patients safe, um, and then you can look at, you know, what's going on with this patient, what's happening. So that is Haldol. It's a medication you're going to see. It's medication you may give, you may not give. It depends on where you work and and kind of what the conditions are uh, in that facility. But it is a medication that can be used for these patients with schizophrenia, mania, or very aggressive or agitated patients. This has been another episode of the MedMaster Podcast by NRSNG.com. To get our free cheat sheet covering the 50 most commonly prescribed medications, head over to NRSNG.com slash 50 meds. That's NRSNG.com slash 50 meds. Thank you so much for joining me today, and thank you for being part of the NRSNG family. We're here to help you succeed in nursing school and in life. So start your journey today over at nrsng.com slash 50 meds. We're glad to have you aboard. You know what time it is now. It's time to go out and be your best self today. Happy nursing, y'all.